Getting Universal Scan up and running is usually pretty easy. First, you collect all the BSDL files you're going to need for all the parts on your board. Then you just drop them on the screen, add a port, and hit scan. Sometimes, though, on a new design, things don't always come up quite that easily. When that happens, it's usually one of two things. Number one, there's simply an issue with the hardware scan chain on your board, or perhaps the pod isn't wired up right or something. Or number two, you either have the wrong BSDL file or the BSDL file has errors in it. The good news is, both of these are very easy to debug using Universal Scan's built-in debugging and diagnostic tools. And actually, it's a good idea to run these diagnostics on all new boards, regardless of whether they come up or not, just so you know that you have a good solid scan chain and that you have the correct BSDL files. So here we go. Step one. Before placing any BSDL files on the screen, go up to the Tools menu and run the Device Count tool. It very quickly comes back and it tells you how many devices Universal Scan sees in the JTAG chain. In this case, I'm connected to the Universal Scan demo board and it found all three devices on that chain. Given that, I know I have a good solid JTAG chain and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Suppose, however, that maybe there's something wrong with this chain. I'm going to reach over and I'm going to grab one of the jumpers in the JTAG chain and I'm going to wiggle it while this tool runs. So I'm going to hit repeat, wiggle the jumper, and the answer comes back kind of the same, but not quite the same. It says there appears to be three devices in the chain, but we only got the result part of the time, in this case 82% of the time. That tells me there's something flaky about this JTAG chain, and I need to stop right here and go figure out what the problem is. This is typically um, reflections or noise or coupling, all the usual electrical things you need to watch out for. Regardless, you need to go check this out and get it to run nice and solid before moving on to step two. I'm going to replace this jumper I was just wiggling, hit repeat, and sure enough, the answer comes back with a solid, there are three devices in the chain. I can move on to step two. Now, the other situation you might run into is something uh, catastrophic wrong. I'm going to reach over and I'm going to yank the T-clock signal off the header here and rerun the tool. This is going to take much longer to run now because Universal Scan is searching the entire chain just trying to find somebody to talk to it and nobody's coming back with an answer. So eventually it'll time out and it'll say, hey, no device is found. I simply can't talk to anybody in this chain. Something major is wrong. So you go look, find out what the problem is. You know, the pod could be loose, or in this case, the T-clock signal could be off. I'm going to reach over and put it back now. Uh, or it could be something bigger. Um, Motorola NTI processors, for example, have special things you have to do in order to enable boundary scan. Be sure to check out the fact on our website for uh, some hints on that. But in this case, it was easy. I just put the T-clock line back. I hit repeat. And sure enough, the test reruns. It found three devices in the chain. I'm ready to go on to step two. So in summary, step one is very simple. Run the device count tool, and it will tell you whether the chain is solid or not. If the chain is solid, you're ready to move on to step two. Before doing step two, you need to go ahead and place your BSDL files on the screen. Let's do that here. Uh, this is our Universal Scan demo board. The first device in the chain is a 9536 PC44. The second device in the chain is this Lattice 2032. And the third device in the chain is an Altera 3032. To make sure I got the right BSDL files, I just go up to my Tools menu, run the Validate BSDL tool, and sure enough, all three devices in the chain are passing. If they weren't, I would go to the Details tab, and it would tell me exactly what the problem is. The left-hand column tells me what the BSDL file expected to see, the right-hand column tells me what we actually read from the device. In this case, everything matches up, so the far right column says pass all the way down. Let's replace the Xilinx BSDL with something else just to force the issue. It would help if I press the right button. Update the BSDL file. I'm going to select a new BSDL file for this part. And this time I'm going to grab a 9572 instead of a 9536. To us, it looks the same. It's got the same package, so we don't know any different. But let's go ahead and run the Validate BSDL tool and see what it says. And sure enough, it says that the first device in the chain failed to pass inspection. Let's go find out why. We go to the Details tab. We select that device. Again, the left-hand column tells us what the BSDL file says should be there. The right-hand column tells us what the device says. In this case, on the third line, the part number 
says it doesn't match up. There's something wrong with the part number. I have a fail over here in the right-hand column. And it also says that the boundary length doesn't look right. Uh, it says the BSDL file is expecting 216 cells, but the hardware only has 108. So something's definitely wrong here. Well, we can just go look at the properties of this device and see very quickly that, oops, yeah, we did in fact grab the wrong BSDL file. So I'm going to update that BSDL file, select a new one, and I'm going to put the right one in this time. Say OK. Rerun the Validate BSDL tool. And sure enough, everything's back where we expect it. So, in summary, checking out your scan chain and your BSDL files is very easy with Universal Scan. To check out the scan chain, run the Device Count tool, and make sure you get a good solid answer there. Then once that's done, instantiate your BSDL files and run the Validate BSDL tool to make sure you got the right BSDL files for the hardware that's on, that's on your board. Given that you got by those two steps, you're ready to go scan the chain. Just hit the scan button and instantly you see what every single pin on every single part in a scan chain is doing.